Hello, I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another one of our video tutorials. This is a video in the uh, fibres section and what we're going to be talking about in today's video is bleaching. So what do we do when we bleach? What actually is bleaching? And how and why is the colour there in the first place that we need to get rid of it by bleaching? Well, the problem, the cause of colour, is this. This is a, a carbon chain. And if you look, every other bond is a double bond. So carbon, double bond, single, carbon, double bond, carbon, single, carbon, double bond, carbon, and on it goes. When you have such a system, it's known as a conjugated double bond system so when you have conjugated double bonds it allows electrons to do things that they can't normally do and that's what causes the color as you'll see in a minute so there's our carbon chain every other bond see double bond double bond double bond every other bond is a double bond now what actually happens is normally when electrons are associated with two atoms they just stay shared between those two atoms but when you have a conjugated double bond system it allows the electrons to go wild and run the whole length of the atomic chain however long it happens to be and if there are other chemical groups here maybe then that will also affect the way in which the electrons behave. Now, if you imagine what the electrons do, imagine the electron starts here, it zooms along in this direction until it gets to the end of the chain. Then it has to slow down, turn around and go back again. And when it gets to this end of the chain, exactly the same. It slows down, turns around, goes back again. Now, when the electron slows down, it's got to give out energy to slow down. And it gives out that energy in the form of light. So, for example, depending on how fast it's been going and how much it needs to slow down and what the other chemical groups are, it may give out light in the blue part of the spectrum. And therefore, you will see blue. On the other hand, it may give out light in the yellow part of the spectrum and it will give out yellow. Or it may give out light in the green part of the spectrum and you will see green. It all depends how much energy it's got to give out and that's influenced by the length of this chain and what other chemical groups may be associated with these carbon atoms to influence it. So that's what the cause of the colour is. So knowing the cause of the colour, then the cure is easy. This is that same carbon chain. And if you look, the double bonds have gone. Because the double bonds have gone, the electrons will not be able to shoot back and forth along the whole length of the chain. So they won't be slowing down. So they won't be giving out colour. So it will be colourless. So one of the things you can do is to damage the lignin, damage it by destroying some of the double bonds. You don't have to destroy all of them, just enough of them to get rid of enough conjugation so that it can't whiz along great long lengths of carbon chain. The other thing you can do is to actually remove the lignin altogether. So here's the lignin in its troublesome form with the double bonds that are going to turn give us a yellow or a yellow or brown, get rid of it. That's the alternative. So you've got these two strategies for bleaching, either damage the lignin or remove the lignin. And the strategy that you choose depends really on what the pulp is. So it depends on the type of pulp you've got there. For example, imagine you've got mechanical pulp. Mechanical pulp, 
has all the lignin still in the fibre. An analysis of mechanical pulp would be exactly the same as an analysis, chemical analysis of the tree that it came from. So if you've chosen mechanical pulp, you've done that because you want the lignin to do something. Maybe it's to provide stiffness for protection. Maybe it's to increase bulk. But if you've chosen a pulp with lignin in, then it's a crazy strategy to bleach it by removing the lignin. Therefore, you choose a strategy of damaging the lignin. So for mechanical pulp, you leave the lignin there, but you damage it by destroying some of the double bonds. Now, with chemical pulp, you arrived at chemical pulp because you took a tree, a ton of tree, chopped it up into wood chips, stewed it with chemicals for a long time at high pressures and high temperatures, and you dissolved away all the lignin. So you've now got half a ton or less of a tree left. So you were deliberately removing the lignin. So surely the best strategy for getting rid of the colour in chemical, repulp, chemical pulp is to remove the bit of lignin that's left. That will give you a purer pulp and no, pulp, no colour problems. So for chemical pulp, we need to remove the lignin. Now, <clears throat> the way that we damage the lignin or even remove the lignin, we used to use chlorine gas. One of the, so we're actually using the element chlorine, dissolving it in water and forming what we call chlorlignins that were very soluble so we could wash them away. But although it's really good to create chlorlignins and wash them away, there was one big problem. Some of that lignin molecule reacted with chlorine to form a really nasty chemical called dioxin. Now dioxin is a very, very powerful carcinogenic material. And people got so good at analysing for this, they could analyse down to parts per billion or even fractions of a part per billion. So people don't want dioxin anywhere. It's, it's so nasty a molecule in causing cancer. And so what we've done now is adopted a strategy of trying to remove chlorine gas from our bleaching systems. Now, it's only the element chlorine, Cl2, that causes the problem. If you use compounds of chlorine, like hypochlorous acid or hypochloric acid, then you don't get the dioxin formed. So what we've done is get rid of chlorine gas from the processes and we've started to use mainly compounds of chlorine. So when we use compounds of chlorine, the type of pulp that we produce or the type of bleaching is known as ECF bleaching, elemental chlorine free. So that means we don't use the element chlorine, we use a compound of chlorine. So we don't use chlorine gas, we use a chlorine compound. It's very small, but very slowly growing. There's another type of bleaching that goes on known as TCF bleaching. TCF bleaching means totally chlorine free. So we use chemicals that don't have any chlorine associated with them at all. So we're using things like oxygen or hydrogen peroxide or ozone. So we're moving, to summarise it, we're moving away from elemental chlorine. The bulk of the bleaching is done with elemental chlorine free materials. And there are some uh, furnishes that were bleached by the totally chlorine free system. OK, well, uh, that's really the end of bleaching. It's all I want to say. I Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please feel free to uh, leave any comments. 
I do make a note of all your requests. Uh, I'm quite busy preparing for the level two technical certificate at the moment. I will answer your uh, emails and your requests as and when you as and when you send them in, as and when I get time to do it. So please enjoy watching our other videos. Keep sending in those comments and requests, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.